Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So last night uh, we did manage to explore 6.3 100% and now I will carry on kind of like breaking down each quest by quest, path by path and basically which boosts need to be used, what are the better counters, what are the bosses and what can you expect in each separate quest. So today's video is going to be all about 6.32 with the Nick Fury boss. So this quest, just like all others, I actually believe, is six path. And so to start off, path number one is power gain, power reversal, and power shield. It's actually a relatively easy path, because uh, both champions gain 100% power gain. Power reversal doesn't really affect you all that much, because typically you want to dump your special attacks, and you only lose power if uh, your power is higher than your opponent. So basically just be aggressive, and power shield opens up a lot of champions to be able to kind of cheese this and uh, overall there is a killmonger on this path that's somewhat tricky and other than that there aren't too many kind of like difficult encounters that you should be too concerned about this is one of the easier paths in this quest especially if you are using uh, champions that can spam special attacks there is also Plague Mind on this path, which is a node I kind of forgot to add in the picture. But yeah, Plague Mind is active there. However, uh, it's not the biggest of deals because of increased power gain to 100%. Additionally, you have to be careful of champions that have power gain buffs. So for instance, Hyperion will not do well at all because you're going to constantly have your power drained here. So that is a bad choice. Champions that gain their power quicker, uh, like Sunspot, like Ghost, and many others are are definitely welcome on any champion with kind of like a passive power gain but yet you do not want to have active power gain buffs so basically yeah champions like dr doom ghost uh sunspot any other champions that can gain power passively quicker somehow will do well Absolutely, mystic champions with mystic dispersion if opponents have buffs that can be helpful as well and additionally this lane actually has a special boost dedicated to it and it's for all the mutant champions and what it does is basically whenever you lose a power bar of power aside from launching a special attack you're gonna gain a prowess buff uh, with 100 potency so that's a huge prowess buff and you're gonna lose them whenever you launch special attack however with a power shield node which kind of like increases a special attack damage by 400 percent uh, that will work extremely well because you will get your power drained due to plague mind and power reversal uh, so in theory it kind of works well if you have sunspot or some other mutant champions that can quickly gain special attacks or keep some sort of great momentum in the fight going uh, but i did not find it kind of necessary you could just kind of cheese through it with like ghost and stuff and next path is Caltrops, so basically that's kind of like Omega Red <laughs> dancing field, I suppose, and Ghost does well here, additionally to basically any bleed immune champions. And uh, now Caltrops damage is quite massive, so even Omega Red at rank 5 does uh, lose some health if you're not too careful, if you do stack too many uh, bleeds on yourself you will actually melt down fairly quickly so do keep that in mind however omega red is still fairly fantastic for uh, this path and basically yeah other than that use any bleed mutant champions ghost and omega red and you're gonna be good to go caltrops is hardly the most problem note to deal with i believe this was also my initial path to clear for when i was doing my first completion run because it is quite easy there wasn't anything kind of like too tricky on it uh, now we have like medusa heimdall and modok and darkhawk on it uh, but you can get by those those are not the worst opponents to face Quake also did fantastic for me here because you can just parry heavy and you never actually have to dash back with Quake. Uh, so that worked out quite well too. And yeah, it's uh, one of the easier lanes I think in this quest. And now uh, we're going to be moving on to the next path. And the next path is empowered immunity and some other stuff yeah power gain 200 percent and empowered immunity uh, so basically because of 200 percent power gain it is actually a fairly tricky path uh, so you do want to be using some power control champions additionally uh, each of these champions on this path has some sort of immunity so you do need to keep that in mind in order not to let them gain too much power and minor aspect of death uh, once again a quake was my mvp but i assume magic will do fantastic fantastic here uh, dr doom should be amazing and uh, many 
other power control champions basically but it is not an easy task to deal with that 200 percent increased power gain do not underestimate it do prepare for it and do have some sort of game plan for it and once again yeah all the champions on that path like thing morningstar black bolt nebula has some sort of immunity but overall all in all they are definitely not uh the most kind of like tricky node combination i suppose just have a game plan ready and you're gonna be just fine there are no special boosts for this lane either as far as i'm aware and that means we can move on to the next lane so lane number what is it five now four uh is uh torns and now torns is a bit of a tricky one however uh again we do have some fairly good solutions to this and as always against Torns, we have Quake, which will do fantastic. We have Namor, which will reflect the Torn damage back and get an actual damage boost. Uh, you have Omega Red, which can bypass Torns fairly effectively. Uh, other than that, there is also a boost available for you. And uh, actually, I'm not entirely sure which lane this is meant to be. It's either Thorns or the next one. Uh, however, first, let's check out uh, what op opponents you have. So there is a Void and Wasp and Ant-Man. Now, those can be quite annoying. But uh, Torns is Torns basically, and other than that, there isn't anything like too major on this lane. So uh, if you have decent suitable counters, you're not gonna have too difficult of a time dealing with Torns. Additionally, there is a skill boost that should provide incredibly large amount of help uh, for pretty much any skilled champions uh, in this lane. And the skill boost basically goes as follows. When the fight starts, you gain an intel passive and uh, you can refresh it every time you land a critical hit. It lasts 12 seconds and basically while that intel passive is active, you do not take any damage back. So this will work against Torns and it will work also against the next uh, path available. So if you do not have like Namor or Quake or any other good Torns counters, then this boost could potentially be life-saving for you. It is uh, working on all of the skill champions. Uh, so yeah keep that in mind definitely prepare for it torrents is not a path you can kind of like enter lightly but if you're well prepared it's actually a relatively easy path because like namor for instance actually gets advantage but with that we can move on to the next path and next path is one of our favorites from variant 3 which is basically spry and gassed and debilitate so what it does is basically every time opponents evade you're gonna get a fatigue debuff placed on you and whenever you land a hit while you have fatigue debuff on you you take a lot of damage back and uh yeah it's not a good time and you lose your power and it's quite annoying to deal with however you can bypass this lane in two kind of three different ways number one you can in fact use await countering champions and make sure that if your opponent never awaits you're never gonna get a fatigue debuff on you in the first place and you're gonna be going through it just fine so any true strike champions any evasion prevention champions will be perfect and you can pretty much sail through this lane Additionally, we have champions that reflect passive damage like Namor. Uh, so Namor is fantastic. You're gonna be playing entire fight with no power bar though, but you're gonna have debuffs placed on you. So you're gonna have a free willpower heal, plus you're gonna have increased damage output. And however, you still need to be careful of those awaits because all of the champions on this lane has some sort of ability or chance to await, as we can see by Ultron, by Stealth Suit Spider-Man. And there's gonna be also uh yeah symbiote spider-man and black widow uh, so all, all in all it's not the worst lane and once again this skill boost i already mentioned should be a great help here as well i think it's originally meant to be used for torns but it would easily help you here as well whenever they evade you get fatigue debuff on you you get that willpower heal but you take no damage you will still however lose uh all your power more or less uh, but in my opinion it's still the better route just to take a wade kind of like prevention champions through strike champions through accuracy champions and just sail through that lane that way without having a need to rely on this boost or having to work on the fatigue in the first place and now the last lane where Kabam decided to be witty on you and actually made a pun into a node inevitability. Special attacks are rare, but their activation is stunning. What that node basically does is it reduces their defensive power gain rate. However, every time they do launch a special attack, they place a stun debuff on you. So you have to keep that in mind. Additionally, there's biohazard and encroaching stun. Now that does seem like an extremely nasty node combination with not too many counters. Uh, so 
originally like by themselves i think only it's kind of like og vision would probably work well here maybe emma frost if you're managing to stay in diamond form for uh the times that you need to be basically immune which is almost always because of biohazard uh, however it definitely does seem like an extremely tricky and annoying lane to deal with however there is a special boost available for this lane which will basically make it relatively easy and fairly cheesable so this is one of those lanes where you have to pretty much use that boost whereas before you those boosts provided like additional counters additional options how to clear these lanes easier uh, but you still could do it without using any of those boosts then for this lane uh it's really hard to kind of imagine myself going through uh it without uh that particular boost and what does that boost do uh we're gonna get to it in a second however the base problem here is that you need to have power control champion basically make sure opponent can never launch a special attack uh, which would not be the hardest thing to do with average power control champion considering they have uh, lower defensive uh, power gain rate however biohazard that limits pretty much only on bleed immune power control champions so like dormammu og vision maybe a couple more and encroaching stun would also make for additionally hard time to deal with this lane and as we can see by opponents there's like a ice man where you need cult up immunity because that ice uh, man damage at the beginning of the fight is insane and colossus is a tanky lad that's not gonna go down anytime quickly basically uh, so yes you pretty much have to rely on this boost and that's why i would also like to pretty much call this one of the bigger path design fails because if you are meant to be able to clear all of this quest without using the boosts then this path would be like an absolute nightmare and yeah it pretty much mandatorily forces you to rely on this tech boost and so let's go through the tech boost what does it do basically whenever the attacker would be bleed uh, bled or poisoned but is immune to that effect they become stun immune for six seconds now because of biohazard if you play aggressively you basically can maintain that the entire uh, fight if you have a problem finding an opening you can just hit opponent's block and that would trigger poison at a high rate and you will go immune once again now since this is affecting all of the tech champions and tech champions only you basically are looking at your robots like warlock sentinel so on and so forth uh, guillotine 2099 dark or whatever else you have available but basically you have to have these robot champions that you can bring in for biohazard uh, use their immunities against bleed and poison and go stun immune and then you don't have to worry about the encroaching stun or uh, being stunned whenever opponents launch special attacks so as you can see this boost will make this path a relatively easy one but at the same time i pity the fool who tries to do this lane without this boost in particular because it's going to be an absolute nightmare of a time phone smashing time and <laughs> extremely frustrating and therefore yes i do believe this path design overall is a fairly big fail just because it mandatorily forces you to use this boost or basically have an extremely horrible time clearing this quest uh, but that uh, was the last path of so this is uh, pretty much the quest itself explained overall i think it's a relatively easy uh, quest compared to some of the ones that we will have to deal with later and the boss itself is nick fury and i have to say that he's probably one of the easier bosses in uh, 6.3 it's extremely kind of skill intensive fight but it is friendly to the most champions so he has shank which basically uh gives him a chance to place a bleed on you whenever you hit his block however that one bleed is not that major if you are using rank 5 5 star champions you can actually heal from it if you only have keep it at one stack he has tactical adjustments which gives him a chance to gain more tactical charges uh, then he, the main thing that he has going for him is a full-on debuff immunity and empowered immunity which kind of uh helps you to be honest uh, that empowered immunity especially because if you are using champions that can reliably place debuffs 
in your controlled way or manner uh, then you can push him constantly from two bars of power to two bars of power to two bars of power and you will never really have to worry about that level one which is extremely difficult to evade and gives him those tactical charges makes him go unblockable so on and so forth like i did one shot him with chorus i did one shot him with gold pool and a few other champions so it is kind of like one of those fights where it's much more up to you and the way you fight obviously suitable counters will help you omega red can do fantastic against this guy as well uh, but uh, all in all it's much more about you being able to fight in the manner that they are asking you to so yeah i definitely do like the boss design i do like this quest overall as well aside from that one lane and i think it is a fairly interesting fairly nice there's nothing kind of like insanely difficult there is a bit of know-how obviously there are some roster requirements when it comes to dealing with that spry and gas lane or torns and so on and so forth but uh, that's pretty much it about this quest uh, so i don't think it's one of the harder ones uh, again the easier lane that i think is probably the easiest one to do is either the caltrops one or the empowered immunity one if you have good, good power control champions uh, but it's really up to you it kind of depends uh, what your roster is more capable of doing if you have big name or then torn's lane will be a breeze for instance uh, if you have big robots and you can use a tech boost then the right lane will be relatively easy so yeah it's definitely doable it's a fairly cool design and i hope this video will kind of help you understand the quest better help you clear it with less items and uh yeah that's pretty much it for today i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did hit that like button hit that sub button hit all the buttons and i'm gonna catch you guys soon see ya